السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر عبا سجاد فرام این آرمی ڈپارٹمنٹ سہارا میڈیکل کالج ٹوڈے دا ٹاپک آف گروس این آرمی از فیبلا دا آبجیکٹیوز آر ٹو ڈسکس دا جنرل فیچرس آف فیبلا اٹس اٹیچمنٹس اینڈ ان دی اینڈ دا کلینیکل این آرمی آف فیبلا Fibula is the posterolateral thinner bone uh, of leg. Superiorly here it is attached to tibia on its lateral condyle by a synovial joint forming the superior tibia fibular joint. In the middle the shafts are connected by a syndesmosis made by the interosseous membrane. Inferiorly the two bones are again connected by a syndesmosis another interosseous ligament and then fibula lower end completes the rectangular socket for the ankle joint this bone is uh, not uh, for the weight bearing of lower limb the weight transmission is mainly through uh, tibia the bone gives attachment to muscles and as it is not involved in any weight bearing it a piece of this bone can be used as a bone graft now as fibula is another long bone it is described as upper end lower end and shaft here we can see the upper end of fibula is expanded and it is called the head of fibula the pointed upward uh, posterolateral part of the head here is called apex or styled process of fibula and the constricted part uh, below the head is called neck of fibula superiorly the head has the articular facet for the attachment uh, with the lateral uh, tibial condyle to form superior tibiofibular joint and the margin of the um, facet gives attachment to the capsule of uh, tibiofibular joint the lower end of fibula is the elongated uh, structure which is completely palpable and is com- uh, wholly known as lateral malleolus it extends lower and most more posteriorly as compared to medial malleolus here you can see that uh, it is 0.5 to 1 cm lower than medial malleolus and posteriorly it extends 1 to 1.5 cm this is the anterior surface of um, uh, malleolus and then we have the posterior surface on the medial surface anteriorly we have the articular facet Uh, for the ankle joint and posteriorly we have a fossa called malleolar fossa and the lateral surface is the subcutaneous part now describing the shaft of fibula it is thin and slightly twisted and it has three borders and three surfaces here you can see it starts from the anterior aspect of head and it is extending uh, downwards in the lower part it is divided into two parts and forms this triangular area just above the lateral malleolus then the medial or interosseous border is lying very close to the anterior border just 1 mm distance and it may not be visible above and below but it is more prominent in the middle part you can trace it uh, from the head and then going downwards it is uh, going to end in the anterior border of uh, the teller facet the posterior border starts from the styled process and ends on the posterior aspect of the lateral malleolus and then and these borders enclose three surfaces the smallest one is the medial surface which is between um 
anterior and posterior border you can see here that it is very thin uh, surface then we have lateral surface this is enclosed between the anterior border and um, posterior border while the posterior surface is enclosed by posterior border and interosseous border it is more of a postromedial surface you can see here a small part is visible here and then uh, medially there is this uh, prominent uh, line or prominent border which is visible on the medial uh, posterior surface that is called medial crest it divides the posterior surface into two parts keeping the um, expanded upper end uh, superiorly with the styled process projecting supralaterally uh, or should I say uh, posteri posteriorly and laterally then keeping the lateral malleolus downwards in such a way that the lateral surface is a roughened subcutaneous surface and medial surface has uh, the facet anteriorly and the malleolar fossa posteriorly this determines the side of um, fibula here in this diagram it is the fibula of right side Now looking at this diagram you can see that uh, most of the muscles of anterior and posterior compartments of um, um, leg and the lateral compartment of leg are arising from a fibula mostly. Other than uh, tibialis anterior the rest of the muscles arising uh, from medial surface of fibula are extensor digitorum longus here in the upper part of medial surface and interosseous membrane then you can see extensor hallucis longus arising from the lower part of medial surface and anterior border and the interosseous membrane and then in the lowermost part of anterior border and medial surface you can see the fibularis tertius muscle arising from it from the upper part of lateral surface we have origin of fibularis longus and from the lower part of lateral surface we have fibularis brevis muscle these both are part of lateral compartment of leg posteriorly we can see um, other than uh, tibialis posterior and uh, flexor digitorum longus the muscle arising from fibula are soleus in the upper part from the posterior aspect of head and the posterior part of the lateral part of the posterior surface then uh, below that is the origin of flexor hallucis longus muscle and then fibularis muscle uh, fibularis brevis muscles uh, origin is extending on this posterior surface as well on the medial border there is attachment of interosseous membrane you can see in this diagram other than that there is capsular attachment on the margin of a head uh, facet and then there is another ligament which is going to form syndesmosis of inferior tibiofibular joint there are associated ligaments of um, ankle joints and um, knee joint which will be discussed with the joints As discussed with the tibia and the head of fibula here you can see is the palpable or subcutaneous part and then the lateral malleolus is a palpable or subcutaneous completely the palpable parts of bone are usually um, uh, suitable for taking biopsies as fibula is not a weight bearing bone part of it can be used as bone grafts and can be re uh, replacing other bones in upper limb and lower limb where there, there, there is removal of bones due to tumor or uh, necrosis and trauma. Fractures can be discussed in the next slide. Fibular fractures are usually associated with tibial fractures and they are occurring more in the lower part of fibula. Here you can see with the twisting of angle, especially eversion, there is a fibular fracture and also tearing and sprain of ligaments associated. 
you can also see that in transfers a uh, boot top uh, fracture that uh, occurs in skiing uh, people there is a fibular fracture and the lower one third of the shaft of fibula is fractured there can also be overlapping of the fracture along with fib uh, tibial fracture and shortening of the limb then there can also be diagonal fractures and shortening of the limb due to overlapping a very important uh, relation with the neck of fibula is of the common peroneal nerve. A common peroneal nerve is associated with the neck of fibula and it can be damaged um, along with the fracture of neck of fibula or it can be compressed against the neck of fibula resulting in foot drop. Then we have another scenario as shown in this diagram that uh, um, in case a foot is stuck in a hole in a ground or trapped somewhere and it is uh, in effort to remove the foot it is forcibly abducted and um, everted or externally rotated in this scenario there is spiral fracture of uh, lower end of um, a fibula or you should say lateral malleolus there is also a strain on the medial collateral ligament here and the medial malleolus can also fracture like in this diagram. Then the lower part of the lateral part of the uh, fibula can also tear like here. These are the different stages of an important uh, fracture known as Potts fracture. Here we have completely discussed the features and attachments of fibula and its clinical anatomy and you can also check this link for detailed description of this bone. Thank you.